views and opinions expressed in this production are those of the individual and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Shooters Nation or our sponsors. Information provided on this show is not a replacement for legal counsel or professional training. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. Hey everybody, this is the Shooters Nation podcast. I'm David Yancey, and of course, hosting this episode with me is none other than Mark Lancaster. As always, we are very glad to have you listening in. So, uh, so hey man, um, I had this really weird dream. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, you remember the 1995 movie Outbreak starring Dustin Hoffman? Oh yeah, I've, I've actually watched it recently. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah, so it, it was kind of like that, right? Um, it was worldwide. Everyone was legit losing their minds. Mm-hmm. There was a toilet paper shortage. Mm-hmm. There was a ridiculous run on guns and ammo. Like, people who hated guns were suddenly all wanting guns. <laughs> and, and, like, yeah. you couldn't even buy boxes of ammo that people don't care about, like 40 Smith & Wesson and 45 ACP, right? Um, seven six two Toker off. Yeah, I mean it. Any, all of it. All of it. Any 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 of it. All it was gone. Seven point five by fifty five Swiss was an allocated ammunition. <laughs> right, and America became a socialist country in in my dream. <laughs> and so, um, what what have you been doing since the last episode? <laughs> Goodness. Well, it's a. Uh... It's nice to be back. I've been thinking about it a little bit, and you've been thinking about it a little bit. And, right. And what's funny to the listeners is like we haven't been talking much. You know what I mean? We everybody's kind of just like our whole crew is kind of just kind of dissipated and gone and done our own thing, which is weird because everybody seems to probably be like less busy. Right. But it's just like so many relationships kind of dissolved over the last year. Not like dissolved like we're not friends anymore. It's just like <laughs> just the communication slowed down. You know what I mean? Stopped. It was like yeah. somebody hit the pause I mean, button. I don't think we've spoken. Like we've texted and emailed, but I right. think we've spoken probably since the last episode or so. I mean, so here and there. I mean, that was yeah. you know, like a quick phone call here or there about other things, and and um, we contributed to the ammo drought <laughs> back yeah. in, the, in the early days, <laughs> and maybe that's why we quit talking. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's just been it's been nuts, right? And and first of all, it's it's man, it's. I know the, the listeners can't see you because they're listening, but it's good to see you, man. And yeah, it's you as well. Good to, yeah, good to hear your voice. Sure. So. You need to turn the uh, unarchive the group. Right, right. On the the, the Shooters Nation group on Facebook. Right. Yeah. I do need to do that. Okay. Well, that has to happen. Um, I was gonna just. I just took a kind of like a half selfie of me and my microphone and my headphones. Right. And I was going to post it in there so people got a teaser as to what's well, about to happen. you know, I mean, hey, it, this is the magic of the internet. I can maybe multitask here. We'll see. I've got a microphone kind of in my way. <laughs> so if I crash the recording, that'll be fun. That'll be just like yeah. old times. But let me see. Let, let's, let me hop over to the Facebook. And and can we call it that still? Or have they changed to Meta? I, I can't keep up with this stuff that they're doing. I refuse to call it Meta. I refuse to call it Meta. I saw the best meme the other day. It was kind of like the Anakin Skywalker Padme laying in the field talking to each other, you know, and, and he he said, you know, are you okay? And she said, what's a meta? What's a meta? And he's like, I don't know. What's a meta? And what is a meta? And she's nothing. What's a meta with you? And then she laid over. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Who's on first? Who's on first, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Uh, Shooters Nation. How, how do I get there? This is like, this is like. Shooters Nation community. Community. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so it's on Facebook. Visit group. Oh, look, there's a button, unarchive. Let's make that happen right now. Well, yep, we're unarchived. There, there it is. Post. It is now suddenly unarchived. And we can we can make this a multimedia experience, sort of. Sort of. It seems like nothing's right here. The audio still just seems a little weird to me. We talked about this right before we hit the record button. Mm-hmm. I'd like dust off everything and, and hook it all back up. And um, I know that for you, the audio through Zoom is kind of kind of janky. It sounds pretty good to me, except then I hear like the noise gate and all my recording crap over here cutting in and out. So I don't know. I mean, if, if this one, if the audio on this sucks, guess what? You asked for us to get back and record, so we're doing that. Don't hassle us, man. <laughs> don't, don't hassle us at all. But it's funny. We, we've actually had people 
every once in a while I'll get a message on, on Instagram predominantly and somebody will say, Hey, what's up with shooters nation? Why aren't you guys recording anymore? What's going on? It's like, <laughs> why are you, why are you all in my business, dude? But, um, I don't know. I mean, we did, we, you know, so a lot, a lot of stuff has happened over the past. I, I had to sit down and count it. It's been a year and nine months. Really? A, a year and nine months. No, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Be it, it's been a year and nine months. Last time, it, it, like pandemic was happening. Cause we right. did like a couple episodes, right? That's right. We did. Yeah. But the last, the last episode that we posted, and I think maybe we recorded one or two that just never happened because things just were really getting kind of weird in the world back then. But, um, it was in March of 2020. So wow. yeah, it, it's, it's nuts. And I mean, and as we're recording this right now, it is pretty much the tail end of November of 2021. So, um, there's the tail end one more day. Right. Yeah. I mean, I like literally when I, when you and I chatted about this the other day and said, I shared with you some local chatter among folks that, um, live here in Tennessee where I'm at. And they said, you know, uh, what, what's going on? We actually had a guy sign on to a forum that I run, and I think people will remember this if they if they can think back that far. Um, uh, you've got the a, a forum for gun owner, gun owners in Tennessee, imaginative, imaginatively called Tennessee Gun Owners. Really creative. Like I was on top of my mm-hmm. game when I named that one. And they uh, <laughs> had some guy, the guy showed up on there from Texas, I, I want to say, and he tracked tracked me down to TGO. To ask about Shooters Nation, <laughs> I thought this is a little weird, but maybe it's a sign. And so I, I contacted you, and I shared a link to the thread, and I said I kind of miss it. What about you? And you said, Yeah, yeah I kind of miss it too. So here we are, and it feels good, it's like it's like riding a bicycle, maybe. Except the I'm- funny thing is, it's the it's probably the first ever recorded podcast we've done without talking points or a script right in any way shape or form right well i i, I couldn't no shortage of material to talk about that's for sure. right no that's that's true but <laughs> i, I did i, I kind of made like a list of things um so i couldn't let you down completely on that and and i, I know that like did you send it to me no i didn't oh I, okay it's, it's I was like no I it's, it's just so i can and like yeah you because know, i'm like all excited <laughs> and jazzed up and i'm gonna start like just talking and and we'll talk in circles but um i didn't make it a spreadsheet it's actually just a, a so Jordan, Jordan will be sad. No spreadsheet was involved in this. Actually, that's not entirely true. I opened a spreadsheet to figure out the audio settings for my crap yep. over here behind me. So that that did happen. Um, this episode brought to you by Microsoft Excel. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, so I don't know. What are you drinking? Let's start there. I've, I've got my I've got my uh, Yingling Hershey's chocolate porter in front of me. So that's that's a thing. But you you had a glass of something that looked. Tasty. I have a uh, basic kind of the, uh, I call it the EDC, right? It's right. The, uh, just a, a, a favorite go-to, and it's a bottle of Angel's Envy. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. That's good. Man, like, I, I hmm, where do we start? There's so many things to talk about. I mean, like. Jeez, yeah. yeah I right. mean, it, it's been, it's been, it's been a bonkers year and a half, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> it's been nuts. All right, so uh, let, let me just ask. Um, yeah, people people have legitimately been asking where we went, yep. and, and arguably, you know, a lot has happened over the past year plus. Um, I, I was kind of chuckling to myself thinking about it, like going through everything that's changed in the world since we last recorded would almost be like filling in a coma patient who had just woken up. <laughs> it's like you know, how do you explain all this stuff to somebody? You know, and um, you know. Guess what? Since you've been asleep, since you've been asleep, people start wearing diapers on their faces, and and you know, <laughs> it's it, yeah, Rolls lost yeah. his mind. But I, I guess you know. So the the thing that that really jumps out at me that everybody probably wants to know right off the bat is why do we stop? Yeah. And I don't know, Mark. Do you do you remember what was going on specifically in your world around March of twenty twenty? And, and why it know seemed that like it, it was the right thing I, to do. I, I, I think that it was kind of a culmination of a bunch of things, probably. We were getting to the point where it was like a, a maintenance of the schedule, right? Yep. We were trying to maintain a schedule, but we were kind of challenged with, you know, finding guests because of pandemic and finding, you know, 
and finding topics to talk about and it's just like but then it's also kind of depressing when you just like every time anybody has a conversation about anything in the middle of a pan in the beginning of a pandemic because it's about the pandemic right oh, and it's yeah. like how much do you want to talk about that and how right. depressing does that get but then there was also like the every week routine that we did for what a year and a half mm -hmm. and it's just like the break felt nice to just have like and i know a lot of you know but like i had a lot of things on my plate during that year and a half that we were doing the podcast you know i'm the vice president of the local gun club i owned a business squared away customs i work for a large firearm just uh distribution company out of louisiana um I'm a father, I'm a husband, I have a cabin that I love to go to that's off grid. You know what I mean? Like the real estate in my schedule was very, very, very thin. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. To free up, I mean, it seems silly, but to free up three hours uh, a week was uh, a nice, nice break. Well, there's so much more than three hours that goes into this. Uh, you know, we, yeah. The, the nice thing about this episode, and it may show through to the, to the folks, and again, no complaining, you jack wagons, because you asked us to come back and do this, but, you know, there is no script. We didn't, we didn't do a lot of research on this. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it, previously though, it could take hours of just, you know, a little bit of research, filling in some notes and, and, you know, cause we have always wanted to produce a quality podcast and, um, I'm proud of that. I, I think that that's one of the things that really jumped out at me with some of the, the recent comments from people who, you know, this guy that tracked us down, um, from Texas was just, he just tried listening to other podcasts about two A stuff and said he couldn't get through it. You know that the, the the material was either I don't know the format was bad, the material was bad, the host sucked. I don't, I don't know. You know I mean it, it. Um, you know surprise, we're probably not that much better tonight, but yeah, they're ugly. They're ugly, yeah. right? You know, <laughs> um, but uh, you know I I think that what you said just a moment ago clicked for me because it, thinking back to that time of 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 the world, it it almost felt like almost like a circuit breaker clicked and, you know, popped for, for me during that time. And, you know, we were doing a couple of episodes about the pandemic and we had no idea what that was going to look like for, for the next, you know, everybody, you remember 15 days to flatten the curve. That was like yeah, oh, two yeah, weeks to flatten the curve. 15, yeah. Two weeks, two weeks flatten the curve. And here we are you know, a, a year and nine months later, and it's still a very hot topic out in, in the rest of the world. And, in um, you know, a lot of people I think have kind of get given up over on just, you know, <laughs> they, they don't track it anymore. They don't get as anxious about it as they used to, but it's still a thing. And of course the media is out there fanning the flames because they want you to, you know, watch and listen and, and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean like when this all really kind of popped, there, there was like a, I don't know. We just took a few days off, few weeks off, like, Hey, let's, let's just kind of, you know, pedal softly for a little while here, see what happens. And then we just never went back to it. And it, I feel like the circuit breaker tripped. It was the overload. You know, it, I was overloaded. You were overloaded. And that was just kind of it. We didn't go back to, to reset it. And, you know, for, for better or worse, that's, that's the best excuse I can give anybody that wants to know why I stopped. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I also think back to that time, and, and man, politics are like the last thing I really want to talk about, despite my socialist joke earlier. The you know the the election had just happened, and yep. the world was going crazy about that. And I remember that yeah, you, know, you had like race riots and things like that going on. Social justice movement was gaining a lot of steam and, and a lot of attention. And you know, I last thing I wanted to do was sit down behind a microphone and, and risk saying something that I thought was funny and that, you know, two weeks ago, everybody else thought was funny, but now suddenly was verboten and lose my job or something like that because of it, you know? So, um, there were a lot of reasons why I didn't want to hop back behind a microphone in, in 2020. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, so how, how did the pandemic change things for you? Didn't we just say we don't talk about the pandemic? Well, we're going to talk about the pandemic. How, how did it change? No, you, you, you can't know? not. Yeah. Right, yeah. But um, so I guess I, let me ask uh, you, you mentioned, yeah, you know, I, I did not introduce you as Mark Lancaster squared away customs when we started recording. And that was like the time honored tradition. It's Mark Lancaster squared away customs. Yep. Should we talk about that? Should, yeah, I mean, a little yeah bit? absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the writings on the wall, I'm sure many guests of uh, listeners have uh, attempted to go there and, and see that, uh, 
It's no longer. He sold the business. Uh, shit, almost a year ago this week, actually. Uh-huh. And uh, the new owner has tried to get a bunch of things in place and get it off the ground the way they wanted to, and they just haven't gotten there yet. I guess um, I haven't really spoken to them much since the transaction happened. But uh, right, yeah, yeah, that's that. Um, the name went with me. I still need to work in this industry, and I wasn't quite willing. My my name and this was kind of synonymous with Squared Away Customs sure. for yeah. eight years. Um, trusting somebody else with that when I still have to work in this industry, well, it just didn't seem like a good idea with me. So the name kind of died when when I left the business, essentially. So there's no telling how many business people wish they had done that, right? You know, once you yeah. once you once you're tied to a brand, you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's that's I mean really not much more to say other than that um i think it was like december 8th was the official like demise of the website and everything was turned off um orders fulfilled so on and so forth and and that was it um kind of missed parts of it well, yeah that's, um, that's gonna be my question is do you i mean it was a labor of love for you you grew it from nothing and turned it into you know it was a very- labor of love but it turned into i mean to be totally honest with you it was very very challenging at times especially near the end um you know and and to be completely frank the the amazons of the world have really destroyed it for small business that you know makes a custom handmade product because there is just no um everybody is in such a hurry and it's almost like an entitlement that you get it fast if you order it on the internet and when you're talking about a custom handmade product it's very challenging and the other and I've talked about this on the podcast before too, you know, making a custom handmade product and trying to do an estimate when you're 800 orders deep, trying to tell you within a week of when you're going to get your product is a pipe dream. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> at, at one point we were making gear for like 300 guns. We had 80 colors. We did them right-handed and left-handed. It had 11 different holster options. Good God. And then the SKU count was in the 500,000s right. of SKUs, right? right? And trying to estimate when that product is going to arrive and the person's you know, it, it, mailbox is challenging. And I made a lot of mistakes along <laughs> the could, way. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm just a laughing. At myself. You could totally get back into that business now. And, and like COVID has reset everybody's expectations. So you just tell everybody it's 15 days to flatten your holster. And you yeah, know, no, I'll just right. say, I'll just put a, I'll, I'll just put a prime logo on my website and then you never know when the <laughs> hell you're going to get it. Right. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Well, uh, so, I mean, I, you, you, you miss elements of it, but I'm sure that not having that, looming hanging over your head is, yeah i mean like a big stress buddies relief. buddies and friends and people that are close to me are like you know the first few months are like you okay yeah you doing all right yeah. and i'm like i am great <laughs> like like <laughs> i am doing really good <laughs> like right I, I am i am so appreciative uh you know that business fed my family for many years yeah yeah uh that business was feeding me and my daughter before i even met my wife right um, but what you're saying you know, is your happiness screwed with people. <laughs> like they were like, Mark, yeah, I Mark, mean, you seem happy. Everybody, you, okay? you know, people just knew I was sh- like, they, they, that business was my baby and yeah. people knew it, you know? So when I mean, it was funny, like literally a hand on the shoulder type of stuff, like, you okay, you doing all right? <laughs> you're like, you're yeah, smiling. I'm a lot, good. Mark. I'm really you? good. Right, yeah. I have an additional 60 <laughs> hours a week. I'm a happy camper. We're seeing you a lot more at the gun range. What, what, what's wrong? <laughs> what's you know? going on? What's going on? You know, should we check on your wife? <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or I put down my holster and it's a tenacore and people are like, what? what it's like, yep, yeah. that happened. Right. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Or, yeah. Well, I was going to ask, so, so uh, holsters, like who, who are the holster manufacturers that, that you like these days? You Man, know? I've got, I've been using two since I bought two holsters since I, oh, three holsters. Um, three holsters since uh, being out of the game and being able to just like, go to the shop and make myself bang a piece out, of gear right? that I need, Yeah, you know, bang one out. Yeah. Um, and what, number one, I, I got a, a safari land, um, no kidding with an, with an ALS. Okay. You know what right. I mean? Like a, you know, a little legit Active law enforcement yeah, holster right, basically. Right. That's what I'm using for classes. That's what's on my battle belt. Um, very cool. I mean, they're they're great. They're solid. That nice active retention. I didn't do the. It's the ALS, which is like the button that you pull backwards rather than the hood to flip forward. Yeah. Which was never something that we were able to integrate in our holsters. It was a very. I can't even tell you how many hours I tried, but it just didn't work. So I ended up getting one of those, and I got it in 
you know, Cordura wrap multicam. And so that's pretty sweet. And then um, my very first one that I bought for like concealment and EDC use was Tenacore. Mm -hmm. And I bought that not based on anybody's opinion whatsoever, with the exception of just looking and knowing what to look for in a good holster. And I knew that when I saw their holsters, they made some really, really clean, really detailed, very clean definition. Well not thought too much out. definition in right. the right place. Yeah, the, the things were done right. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I, I bought that, loved it. And then started doing a little bit more kind of like like khakis and polo dress and you know an oz9 with a comp and an x300u and a in a in a 17 round mag <laughs> was just kind of becoming a little bit much oh, and yeah. Yeah, uh yeah, yeah. so i got together with a company called continuous precision out of michigan i'm familiar with them yes and they did me up um if you, and if anybody wants to go to them, go and ask for the Lancaster special. And I dubbed it that. It's not really what they call it, but uh, they'll know what you're talking about. Um, I got a 43X, you know, fully serrated with the RMR CC milled for it. Right. I right. got the rear sight in front of the RMR rather than in the rear so that it's not cutting on my stomach and my T-shirts. There you go. Um, so then I had this new little... CCW. Oh, and I got the Shield Arms mags because they're 15 plus one. So you got a 43X with a 15 plus one. Continuous also makes a plus five base plate for the Shield Arms mags. So my backup mag is a 20 for a 43X. That is it's freaking nice. brilliant. It's a great, great little package. Um, yeah, I needed a holster for it, you know, and couldn't just go bang one out. So uh, I went to the guy that I really taught me the most, and that was uh, Filster um right got on. a nice and a little uh filster uh pedic the, scary holster is that's pro is it the filter i think it's the pro it's got kind of like a oval shaped contour at the at the yeah. muzzle yeah and it's a hundred percent ambidextrous right um it's got holes already pre-drilled for literally any mounting platform you want whether yes. it's a foamy clip or I forget what those steel clips are called because I'm out of the game. The, so like the DCCs, the, yeah, the, the mono yeah. blocks or the And those things are yeah. great, but they are bitch, they do not come off your belt. No, like, they'll, they'll they get a leather a pain belt apart. Ass yeah. To get off. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um but I mean at the same time that's what you want, right? But right. I'm still a soft loop guy. I still am a big fan of the soft loop. Right. Um and uh so yeah, you can run those, you can run a soft loop in a strut, you can run a soft loop a strut in a in a wing to tuck the grip. Um but man, like after after carrying a uh, full size Glock 17 size OZ9 with a comp and an X300U, um, and a flared Magwell appendix carry for three years, going down to a 43X, I feel like, you know, it's like like you're not carrying feels, anything, right? Yeah, like I'm not carrying anything. It's just like, well, that's absolutely gone. You know right. what I mean? Like, there's no seeing that one. Right. Um, and I gotta say, like, I thought that it was going to be a challenge. Like I'm never going to want to go back to carrying a full size gun. And I was kind of like bummed about that because I was kind of took pride in like just carrying the big gun, but through the OZ nine on again the other day and it still feels just great. So well, it's, it's, I, it's, it's colder weather. And so you can you know dress a little bit better mm -hmm. around a bigger gun. So yeah, I mean, that, that's amazing though, that you've, you've moved to the Glock 43. Why not the 48? Why not the longer, the, the longer slide of a 48? Because I wanted to be able to comp it. Oh, okay. So it, uh, Parker Mountain Machine side. makes a pretty legit barrel and comp combination for it. Right. That gives me the 48 length. Okay. Um, but by comping it, it's not getting me the end of those those 48 holsters. Right. That is that is sweet. Yeah, I've looked at the 48 a couple of times recently, thinking almost the exact same thing. The one the one variation that you did that I really liked was putting the rear iron sight in front of the optic mm -hmm. to keep it from cutting into you and, and cutting up your shirts. And and I'll be very honest with you. That's brilliant. I don't know why the heck that never occurred to me that, that, you know, I've, I've, I've seen it done for other reasons and explained, you know, for other reasons, like Aaron Cowan, you know, like to have it in front of the site because it wasn't as obtrusive and it's a little bit of an extra protection you know, from cement casings popping up against the glass of the optic and all the other stuff. But the, the, you're, you're dead right. You know, the, the, an optic is never the thing that's caused me any discomfort carrying inside the waistband. It, it's always the, the rear iron sight. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. And I've got, I can't even tell you 
stacks of t-shirts that i've just now now they're like grub shirts you know what i mean yeah yeah and they're just covered in these like little tiny holes and it was yep. like a year and a half of carrying up an excavator i'm like why do i get all of these freaking holes all over my shirt like yeah. i don't understand where the hell these are coming from yeah these little tiny holes and it's just from anytime you rub up against something in your stomach and it hits yes. that site and it just pokes a little hole it does and it does the, I, I, as much as i love the height of the zev iron sights they are i, I have they they're sharp like I, I actually yep. dehorned one of them with a file and, and a couple of stones and then you know reblacked it a little bit to keep it from mm-hmm. you know but that helped but they are sharp when when they you know they cut the profile of them they're just sharp um, that's interesting I, I really I'm, I've been leaning more and more towards the idea of a 48x or I'm sorry just a 48 um, with an optic mm-hmm. and and the shield arms mag for the for the sake of having a thinner smaller lighter gun. Now I'm thinking I, about that 43 with the comp. That just sounds brilliant. I can't say enough about this continuous precision package. Yeah. Um, they had a local guy do the stipple on it. Other than that, they did a trigger, their mag release, their milling on the slide. They cut it for the RM RCC. Mm. Those sites that I have on it are yeah. made by them. They actually mill and make the sites there. Um, they did their mag well on it. They did their mag base plate for the flush, and then they did their mag base plate for the plus three or the plus five for the plus five on the shield arms mags. Right. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a great gun. I uh, did a class with Mike Cicino, uh a few months back, and I ran that gun through. I don't want to say half it, probably twenty five percent of it. So just kind of want to get a feel for it, you know what I mean? And really like, and it was just, it was a lot of reps in this class, but so I wouldn't typically do that on such a small gun. Um, but it's my carry gun and you know, I've got a few thousand rounds through it. So I figured I'd run it a little bit more in this class and see what I could do. And like, you know, with the way my hands are, my thumb is damn near past the muzzle <laughs> right? the way I, the way I grip the gun. And, uh, and Mike's like, let me see that thing. And he grabbed it and in classic Mike at 10 yards, he's like, does three shots and, you know, makes a freaking clover leaf, a single hole out of three shots. He's like, that shoot's pretty good. And he gave me the, 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 that a boy nod type of thing. <laughs> right. and handed me my gun back. <laughs> and I'm just like, be- man, it, it's impressive out of a tiny little gun, you know, like it, it, it does really well. That is really neat. So yeah, definitely. If you have any interest in, in clock parts, triggers, uh, any of that kind of stuff, um, continuous precision and uh and if you really really want a nice build on your 43x 48 glock 19 glock 17 just tell me you want the lancaster special to know what you're looking for that is awesome good guy super good guys over there so well and you're not gonna classic. I, lo- I love the fact though that the industry you know in, in a very short period of time has figured out how to take very compact sleek guns and give them capacity and yeah and that's that's one of those things that that's why I've always kind of steered back towards the the Glock 19 or a gun that's the size of a Glock 19. I, I want 15 rounds, and mm-hmm. yeah, now that you can get that in a smaller package, I can adapt my shooting style to a, a smaller gun. What I don't mm-hmm. want is adapt my my carry practices to less than 15 rounds in the you know in the, in the grip if I if I can avoid it. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's all right. That's all right. Well, I'm I, I've I've become a gun whore. I guess, or maybe I've embraced my gun for <laughs> in the, in the past year and, and a half. I, um, so still there, there's a solid chance that you're going to find me carrying a Glock 19 or something like that. Like, you know, I've got a shadow system, the MR920 and that's a neat little gun. Um, there's some things about it that I would like, I would change if I, if I could, but you know, it, it's a neat little gun. Uh, the, the one that I've carried the most for the past year is one that Cicino actually has also. I've, I've been carrying the, the Walter PDP uh, four inch compact. And I, so yeah. I mean, as many of you know, I'm a national sales rep for arguably one of the bigger wholesale distributors in the country. Right. And that gun is the, in my opinion, and I've shot the hell out of them. I went to, a shoot and shot them like had with Walther and we're shooting their guns in front of them. And was this kind of like the, the, the lead up to them to being launched? Is that, is 
that when that was or no it was just after it came out okay so the company i work for had a big shoot for us employees so 100 of us at the range with 40 different manufacturers and they just had booth after booth after booth and we just got to shoot anything we wanted right with all the ammo we wanted and i i walked up and you know i work with a, a bunch of people that are you know gun people but not really gun people not like a me gun people you know right, what i mean right. they get guns they understand guns and and uh you know but that i walked up and you know a lot of them it's like they're they're get, getting coached on their grip and this and that my coworkers, and then i walk up and he hands me a mag and uh there was like five plates set up and it had a had a hollow sun i think a I don't know. What's the enclosed one? 509. 509. Is what yeah, that's what I run on yeah. mine. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great sight. I a hollow sun on it and I grabbed it and I press check, none of the pipe, crack around into it, pull up, ding, 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 ding. 10 rounds. He goes, Oh, he's like, You know, you're right around. And he handed me two more mags. He's like, Get after it a little bit. Right. So I started shooting that gun and it was my first time behind the PDP. And I was just like, Man, for a six hundred dollar bill, right? You don't, you do not buy a better pistol. No, you, you really don't. I mean, I've, I've, I've told people, you know how I am. I obsess over the minutia on things, and and you know, I, um, it's got great grip texture. You, you don't get a better texture in a handgun from the factory, in my opinion, than than that. Um, it's, it's one of the few that I can get my short little shrek thumb around and hit the mag release without adjusting my grip the the ergonomics are good like you know i, I carried a, a, a hk vp9 back when that was the new thing years and years and years ago and i would have the problem of riding the the slide release with my thumb my support hand thumb mm -hmm. don't have that problem with the pdp even though it's a very similar um you know slide lock slide release lever design don't have that problem with it um the, the trigger on it's phenomenal for for factory and the the optics mounting plate is pretty great i think the or the the mounting system is pretty great the only thing that i you know i remember everybody lost their minds about oh, it doesn't have any recoil losses you know the the, the site you know the optics gonna fly off into space after you shoot it a few times yep. no yet yeah, I've, I've checked it a few times and, and it hasn't moved an iota so um you know i'm running the 509t on it and it's just a great little gun. It, it's really, I kind of feel like they out Glocked Glock on this one. And that's pretty impressive. You know, even when I, I have a part, it was pretty simple inside, you know, like the sear and everything's mm -hmm. not like overly complicated or anything. I haven't purchased one yet. Right. Um, because for one, it like, the, like, it, and I've talked about this on the show before, like when I buy things, they kind of need a home for mm -hmm. me. Sure. Like I have yeah. to have a place for it. And I just don't have a place for another big, gun like that you know my zev i've just you know become one with that thing i shoot it have shot it so much and it's so silky smooth and i know everything about it inside and out and and i absolutely love it but it's a two thousand dollar gun mm -hmm. you know what i mean like if i bought a pdp mm -hmm. i would not change a thing no like well, they no. just yeah. out of the box that the gun box, is, is is i would say arguably as good as the oz9 and yeah. it's and it's it's a little bit different right and it's it not is. quite as race ready i guess but yeah. man like i don't know what more you need if it's if you're looking for like a good sized edc defensive weapon with a good grip a great trigger good serrations optic ready good sights you know it's it's definitely the the player yeah and i'm trying to remember what what walter calls the the performance trigger that you can buy aftermarket from them and and you know people were putting it in the pbq m2s and all that stuff for a while um I wouldn't even do that. I've got a friend that put one of those in his, and I was like, why? I mean, the, the thing, you know, the box feels almost a little light. So, mm -hmm. trigger pull. And uh, I, I was like, I don't understand why you would feel the need to do that, but okay, more power to you. Uh, I, you know, they, Walter made a big deal about the front cocking serrations, and I think they call it like the, you know, the landscape, I forget what it is, some, some sort of weird, like, you know, term for it almost like a, I think it's like terrain or something weird like that and um yeah it makes it a little chunky in the slide you know the, the front of it's a little chunky which then makes holsters a little chunky which then causes some some challenges you know I, the the guys that are finally figuring out how to bend kydex from or, or have, have figured it out but initially 
you would get a holster that would accommodate the front, you know, the front quadrant of that slide and, and how it kind of bulb out a little bit. And then the, the, the rear, everything aft of that, you know, from the ejection port back was, was very loose in the holster and the gun would just kind of flop around there. I'm like, this is, this sucks. You know, I'm not used to this. I want a holster that has good retention. So, um, it's taken a while to get, to get holsters that, that work with it, but no, it's, it's, it's a great one. I love it. Now the, the, here's the ridiculous thing. Now that I've just sung the praises, the PDP, I'm going to show you what I'm carrying on my, <laughs> on my desk at the moment. Um, and this, no, no, of course. <laughs> Almost. Hey, but you, you can't rag it too hard. You're wearing a shirt. So I, I've got a, I've got a, a SIG 320. Um, this is the X carry with the Wilson combat grip module Yep. and the 509 T riding on top of it in mm-hmm. a CNH precision mounting plate. Um, and, and this is a, I, I bought it on kind of a whim because I felt like, well, you know, I kind of want the serialized fire control unit so I can play around with other things. But then when I got this in hand, I was like, man, this is kind of nice. You know, with the X carry, this one came with the RXP pro, I guess with the Romeo Pro Optic it has a metal shield around it and a bunch of other stuff. Promptly threw that in the trash and dropped a 509 on it. It, it just it, it it's great. You know the the trigger's great, even though it's 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 you know the Sig 320 trigger. It, it doesn't like wow you in any way. It's a little funky if you're used to Glocks, but I, I like the gun. It, it it balances well. It carries well. Um, got my optic of choice on there, and then I've I've, I've just this, you know, you were talking about the holsters. This is this this thing that I'm I'm using. Just this just arrived today. Um, it's the second holster I bought from this guy. Um, let me find it because I want to make sure I say it right. I plug this guy for free, but that's all right. I like him, and and why the heck not? In Altamont Springs, Florida, Armsmen A R M Z M E N Armsmen holster. But this is very similar to the things that you used to crank out, Mark, mm-hmm. back when Square One mm-hmm. Customs was doing its its thing, and yep. got the DCC monoblock on it, the mod wing. Mm-hmm. It's got really good retention. Yeah, I can load this gun up with 17 rounds. I haven't even adjusted it yet. Just not, you know, shake it upside down. Doesn't want to bounce out of the holster. It's, it's a it's a great piece of Kydex, and this guy's shipping pretty quickly. So um, now how he's doing that, I have no idea. Probably either got a you know, an army of, of L's crafting holsters for him so he can get them out in, in two weeks' time, or he never sleeps and probably has a chemical dependency. Probably not. I made that up, but, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, I mean, he, he's cranking holsters out quick. And and so, anyway, I mean, this, this is kind of, that's the reason why it's sitting on my, on my desk right now is that the holster just arrived. And I, I unpacked it about an hour before we started recording. And I thought, well, I'm going to sit here and fidget with this. So, um yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So I um I was gonna start out the show while saying you know the, you you can tell that the world is completely gone to shit because Mark's wearing a Sig Sauer polo shirt. <laughs> I didn't. I, I I noticed it. I noticed it, but I didn't ask the story. It's, it's the free shirt problems. Free shirt problems. Okay. Well, I, that's all right. <laughs> You know, there, there are worse shirts oh, to have. I mean, uh, I've got a really good relationship with SIG. I do a lot of business with SIG. Um, I've had a couple of bad experiences personally with SIG, but I've had some really good ones too. Yeah. And uh, well, I mean, uh, no, the, just... the P320 thing just really grinded my gears that time, and I must never do it again. Was that the 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 problem that they had with them firing unintentionally bought, dropped or whatever? I bought one of their first Optic Renny P320s. Mm-hmm. And it said that it works with the Romeo. Oh, I do remember this. We which one was about it? The this. Romeo. What is it? Yeah, Romeo One. Romeo One, but it ended up being the Romeo One Pro, which only the, worked with the Romeo One Pro. Yeah, and it was a screw now. length issue. So yes. I call Sig, and I'm like, "Hey, this is Mark. You know, I work, I'm one of your larger distributors. Like, I got this gun from the company I work for, and I got the optic from the company that I worked for, and like." the screws just are not working like there's no configuration he goes oh he's like read me the model number of the gun and i read him that he's like oh you have to have the pro right optic right on that model gun right i was like well it's a screw depth issue like i just need a screw a little longer and he goes nope that's not your problem and i'm just like oh my god <laughs> you know it's like one of those moments when you kind of like go cross out on the phone i'm just like dude I'm telling you, I need a screw that's just a little longer. <laughs> it's like walking Can into a car park store screws? and you know more than the guy They're on like, the counter. That's, right. Yeah, that's yeah. not what you need. And I'm like, 
I've already bought the dot. The dot is open. I cannot return it. The seal is right. broken. Like I need longer screws. Sorry, that's not how this works. Oh, good I'm grief! Just like goodbye. Quit. Yeah, yeah. Sold the gun. Sold the dot. Moved on. <laughs> well, this this is legitimately my third P320 of any type. I had I had one of the original P320 compacts, and the the idea, the concept of it sounded great. You know, kind of like you know, like Zev did. Hey, we're going to serialize the fire control unit. And then you can swap grip modules around it. That's fantastic. But then they weren't releasing grip modules of any of any account. Um, it felt like a bar of soap in my hands. The the muzzle height, you know, the bore height over over the the you know grip was enough that it felt weird to me. And it was just it just screwed with my cadence. I mean, I could have gotten used to it, but yeah, you know, my split times with a Glock, I knew how a Glock would run and cycle, and this felt weird. So ditched it. A couple years later, you know, become stupid. I bought an RXP compact and tried it, and it had the, the was it like the X5 grip. That's better, but still not mm-hmm. great. Um, had somebody that decided that they shot it at the range one day when I took it, and they really liked it, and and you know made me an offer, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. So you know, sold it, sold him the gun pretty much on the site, um, and then I bought this one, and I'll be very honest with you. The thing that really convinced me to go back to this was the fact that Polymer 80 had released a grip module for the SIG 320. And I I took a chance. I bought a grip module without even owning the gun, put it in my hands. I was like, oh, wow, that is that's good. Mm-hmm. It pointed natural, felt like a 1911. As a matter of fact, it's, over, it's on the table over here across from me. I, I just got the Wilson Combat grip module on it right now. But that thing is great. If I could change one thing about the, the P, P80 grip module for the SIG, it would be the mag catch. I would I would ask them to put a metal mag latch in it because I noticed that the the metal mags are chewing apart the you know the plastic mag latch that comes in the P eighty grip module. Now, does that mean it's gonna fail? I don't know. Probably thousands and thousands of repetitions later it might, but I'm still not not in love with the plastic mag latch. So mm-hmm. yeah, but anyway, yeah so the the Wilson one uses a factory SIG mag latch and it's a it's a reasonable compromise if i could have my druthers it would be that mag latch in the p80 grip module and life would be good but, you, uh, so you like the way that that factory sig mag catch works i, I don't necessarily like i mean so the, mag, the p80 version is more glock style right it's the, the same the p80 is, is absolutely more glock style it seems it seems way more fail proof to me than the I, I think you're right from that perspective if it were just made of metal then it would yep. it would it would be fine because you know you're running metal mags kind of the same yep. way that Shield Arms when you when you buy the Shield Arms mag for the Glock they give you their mag latch yep. because it's you know it's alloy it's not going to be chewed up by the metal mags um, but yeah I mean I just with dry fire and, and shooting at the, now shooting the thing at the range with the polymer eighty grip module it was like life changing as far as Sig you know Sig care goes like, I was mm-hmm. like yeah I care more about this gun now because you know the grip feels right and, and the angles right and everything else but um, you know, I just, I, I took it apart when I got back home cause I was genuinely curious and you could see it's starting to shave off material. Now that might have stopped. It might've like shaved off a little bit and then that was it. Like, you know, tolerances would have worked in or whatever, but I just, I don't know. I, I don't love the fact that it's a plastic, you know, Glock style mag release with metal mags. It seems like mm-hmm. aftermarket opportunity for somebody right there. Go, go machine up a bunch of replacement mag latches for that. Yeah, charge thirty five bucks a piece. I'd buy one. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's 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 kind of it. Again, the 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 Walter PDP is probably the the regular everyday carry, and the Sig, yeah, every once in a while. Um, I sold my Zev. I hate to say it. I, that was another oh. another one of those opportunities where somebody came along and offered me way more for it than I paid for it, and. Yeah. I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't say I sold a lot of guns through <laughs> pandemic. Man, I mean, like, I, had I not just bought... So I bought a Staccato C2 Duo. I sold my P, because uh, that gun was just too damn heavy, and um, bought a C2, which was nice and light and, and stupid expensive, and then somebody came along and offered me, you know... They offered me about 17 for the Zev, because they couldn't find them. They wanted one, couldn't find one. And, you know, Zev was struggling to keep up with the demand at that point. And when I thought about it, I was like, well, I got two guns that are close to four grand between the two of them. Neither one of them are a gun that I'd ever want to have to use in a, in a defensive purpose and have to surrender to evidence. 
So I made a decision, sold the guy to Zeb. I miss it. I like I've I've looked at the the OZ9 compacts now several times since then, and I just one of these days I'll do it. One of these days I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. There's been a lot of really fun and exciting news in the industry since we've spoken last. Is like mm-hmm. we could do, we could do a show on new products. Oh, I, I know. Um, well, let me ask you. I mean, so there's been some some recent things that have been announced. Uh, yeah, it seems like the the industry starting to warm back up. You know, last year was in the gun industry was all about keeping their head above water. You know, can't get ammo. Ammo would come in stock, it'd sell out. The manufacturers were just trying to keep guns in stock, which was a good problem to have because during the Trump era. You know, they like ARs were sitting around collecting dust in warehouses. So last year, I think, was a was a much needed boost to the gun industry's bottom line. But so new products are coming out now. What what are you excited about? What what's on the horizon that like you can think of off the top of your head that you're looking um, forward to? A lot of defensive handheld light. Yes, that was that was that was actually one of two things I had listed. Um, the other one is their pistol light. <laughs> so, um, and I'm, their pistol light. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really Handheld is going to be first. But uh, did you see today's news? News about cloud defensive, and our podcast listeners will appreciate this. Did not. They hired somebody new today. Who did they hire? Jason Demo. Did they really? Mm. Is he going to be the director of media for them? Director of marketing and media. That's awesome. Yep. I knew that they yeah, were as, they were as, of, for as that. of literally like an hour and a half ago they announced it. That's fantastic. That is really, really. fantastic. So I guess they're stealing him away from from um, ballistic advantage. Yeah, I mean I don't know the details of mm-hmm. what he's doing there, or where he's going, or what he's doing. I mean some of those gigs you can kind of juggle a couple of things right, at right. the same time. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Maybe he's doing that. Maybe he's not. I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure. But uh, right. It was a it's a good move for all of them. I that think. that is good news. That's that makes me guys. happy. Yeah, that, that's good. Yeah. I, you know, the, of course, cloud defensive guys are are tops already and. Jason, love Jason. So yeah, that's that's cool. Mm-hmm. That is very cool. I had no idea, but that's that's exciting. Um, I yeah. saw a couple of months ago they they posted on social media they were looking for somebody to be their director of media and marketing. And yeah. um, I thought about him, but I also thought, man, ballistic advantage has got him. Yeah, you know, he's mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, kind of like a if you're like a media marketing guy, like, and especially because he's also a photographer. Mm-hmm. Like, how many really sick and cool ways is there to photographer a barrel that's inside of a handguard? Right. You yeah. know, that that must have been a challenge. And I'm sure Jason will text me when he hears this. You know what I mean? Like, that must have been, <laughs> like, somewhat of, like, man, this is a pain right. in the ass. Yeah. Like, how do I make this black steel pipe look fancy that's wrapped in this cool handguard? Right, right. You know, like. yeah. Well, yeah, he, he would do the action shots. I mean, I think that was the thing that yeah. probably made it cool was being able to go out and do the action shots and, and you know, the, the product out in settings. If you're just doing pure product photography, that mm-hmm. probably that probably makes a, a photographer go crazy slowly. Yeah. Yeah. Um I also just this week scored a and I had it on order for a long time. Finally came in this week. A primary weapon systems uh Did Did Mark really? one one Mark one one four mod two. Oh my gosh. Well that's a big that's the, a that's a long gun. If if it's, it's the one four, I'm thinking about, right? It's a fourteen it's a fourteen five. Okay. Uh, oh, you're long stroke piston. On it. Yeah, so yeah. it's a pinned, pinned and welded non SBR non pistol. So it's okay. a pin and welded, uh, so 16 to the end of the muzzle device. Okay. Uh, had him put on a Griffin one so I could put my suppressors on it, obviously. And uh, yeah, it's my first ever piston gun. So That's awesome. How do you like it? How's it run? I have not put a round through it. It's literally this week. So well, um, there you go. I've put all my stuff on it, put my cloud defensive light on it, uh, reptilian mount. Uh, MRO HD. Um, and that's all this gun's getting. Um, right. And uh, yeah, got it all, all ready to go. Just have not had a moment to get skip over to the range. It's been snowy, rainy, and cold here. Um, I was gonna ask. Seems like uh, all the other episodes, you know, like what's the weather like in New Hampshire? And and it's, mm-hmm. so it's it's winter, right? Oh yeah, I got five inches on the ground. Right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, just I, I know not too long ago I saw that. On your Instagram account, you were out in the woods. the The leaves were still changing. You were deer hunting. Yep. You had first a new, part you had of the month, rifle I was, for that. It looked like. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. we didn't talk about that either. Yeah. Man, oh man, I lost yeah. it for that thing for a long time. I got the new uh, Springfield Armory Waypoint Twenty Twenty. Make it in the left hand. I need a left hand bolt. I need a left hand bolt. I, I was yeah. I was looking them the other day in shopping. I was like, oh dang it, they don't have a left hand oh, version of it. Yeah. 
Um, and the rifle's amazing. The rifle's great. The trigger out of the box comes with the trigger tech. Um, it's a carbon fiber stock by G Composites. Uh, carbon fiber wrapped barrel. Um, like I said, great trigger, fluted, fluted bolt. Um, the gun weighs sub six pounds. Are you three hundred eight or six five Creedmoor? Oh yeah, three hundred eight. Three hundred eight. I don't right. six. I don't six five Creedmoor. Okay, All but right. um, yeah. I, I mean, I'm just four calibers. You know what I mean? Right. Right. That's kind of where I, I kind of stay in those in those lanes, yep. and it's just like, and I've hammed and hawed about it so many times. Just like it's just so easy just to look at the shelf and just see the stacks. You know, I'm looking Absolutely. over my computer monitors right now and see like. There's the nine mil pile. There's the twenty two pile. There's the three oh eight pile. You know, so on and so forth, and and only have to worry about four oh. piles rather than like yeah. shelves. Like I go to my dad's and he's got like shelves full of boxes of ammo of different calibers, calibers right. and grains, and just like right. ugh, I'm just I mean, like, six five has has it, it's stroked my curiosity on more than one occasion, but I'm, I'm three oh eight still. I mean, because I'm. This is silly. Maybe, maybe it's not. I mean, last year taught me that that some of the things that we used to joke about, like oh, prepper craziness, wasn't so crazy after all. But you know, three hundred eight, seven six two. I'm gonna find that anywhere. Like in a, in a supply shortage, that's pretty common. You, you can still go to an Ace Hardware in the woods right. of Michigan and come exactly. up with a box of three hundred eight. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, go in there and ask for a six five Creedmoor or or you know six point two Birkenstock flannel yeah. socks or whatever. You know, you're not gonna find it. You know, and, and so. It's, uh, and the thing about it is you start looking at it ballistically, mm-hmm. like it really only starts to outperform after 300 yards. Right, right. Way you know, there. and primar- my primary use of this rifle is deer, and if I ever get lucky enough to draw a mustag. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, me taking a 300-yard deer shot in New Hampshire, never happening. Um, you know what I mean? Um, out west but, on an elk hunt shooting between mountain ridges or something, maybe that makes more sense. And not like 308's not capable. No. Right. It's no. just a, it's just a little bit more of a drop. Right. And when it comes to the drop, I got that squared away too because I did a loophole CDS Mark Five HD. Good Lord. So wait, and... which, which was more expensive? Was the rifle more expensive than the optic? Because that rifle's not cheap, but that optic no, probably the rifle like... was more expensive, but they okay. were damn close. Yeah, I was gonna um, say they're both about what two grand. Yeah. Two. So yeah. I did the custom dial for those of you that don't know. CDS is you buy the scope. And there's a little pamphlet in the box. This is go to go to the you know CDS uh, loophole slash CDS whatever it is. So you go to this section of the website and it's like what caliber are you shooting? And you click 308. What bullet weight? 165s. And then it's like what's your average elevation? What's your zero at? What's your twist rate? What's your barrel length? What's your velocity of your ammo? You know, and you answer all these questions and hit submit, and then they mail you a turret for your elevation for the top of your scope no that is way. customized to your load right on that gun and what's cool about it is when i go to my rangefinder, hit the laser button and i'm at 275 and i just turn the dial to 275 no way and i aim dead on and it freaking puts the bullets like oh this God. at 300 yards it's unbelievable or through 275 even and you know it spins all the way up to like 800 Why you know what i mean world? like why are they the first ones to figure this out? I mean, that that is brilliant. I mean, that that is like it's great. Yeah, it absolutely is absolutely great. That is well, damn good loophole. Way to go there. Yep. Yeah. Um. So super happy with the scope, and of course, and it's got the fire dot. So it's just got that nice little delicate red dot right in oh, the yeah. center. It doesn't starburst. It's just a nice crisp little dot. Um. And they have the CDS in in a wide variation of their lines. I think you can get like a four hundred dollar scope with their CDS system. Wow. Which is kind of cool. Well, so and the cool thing is, is uh, it's got a, a stop too. So when you, if you're spun up to like 800 meters and you want to go back to zero, you just spin and it goes click, click. and it stops nice. when you're at, when you're at your zero mark, which oh, I that's said quick. 100 yards. That's very yeah. quick. Well, so have you taken deer with it this season? I have not had any luck deer hunting yet this okay. season. No. Yeah. Ho- right. Hopefully this weekend. But man, I did 10 days up at the cabin. It was obnoxiously warm. It was like 55 degrees and like drizzling rain and just shitty the whole week. Oh, that's, yeah, they, and, they bed down in that kind of weather and don't move very much. Yeah. And the thing about it is up there, it's just like there's no pressure because there's very few roads. And I'm talking hundreds of thousands of acres. Right. Just like. Yeah, there's no, know, just, there's no other hunters there's no pressure. running them. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah there's no like, let's go to this section, you know, because right. the section is the tip of New Hampshire. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> right. it's all of the tip of New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
so you really need to to know where they are and just be on them and without snow you know tracking is challenging and the I mean, rain you can't hear shit it's just been it was a challenge I, I know that sounds miserable and it's frustrating but honestly that sounds more like hunting right because i've gotten so used to it and i haven't deer hunted now in a few years but back when i was doing it yeah you, know, you had there was pressure from a lot of other hunters around you on other land mm-hmm. and they would run the deer and you know the when the when they would stir them up and get them on a run they just run around in front of you and you know whatever field you were working and you just drop them and and so there's no there's no hunting in that it's just i'm just gonna sit mm-hmm. a deer stand and wait for a deer to run out in front of me yeah um yeah so yeah what you, what you just described sounds kind of crappy if you're wanting yeah. to bag a deer but and it's so strange because you know it's just classic new hampshire this year it's like 55 and slight rain and then yeah. two years ago it was five degrees and two and a half feet of snow right you know right. what i mean it's just like same time of year it's just yeah freaking new hampshire man you yeah can, you know, never tell well, my oldest... It could be 65 tomorrow, and I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, our, our, it's been kind of weird weather here. I mean, we're, we're in a bit of a warm spell, but it, it had been really frigid for the past week or so, and, and you know, it's supposed to bottom, bottom's supposed to drop back out of it, so we'll see. But this time last year, we were in snow in Tennessee. So, um, mm. yeah. I was going to say, my oldest daughter, um, she she lives in, in Kentucky with her husband on, on you know, a farm that they own, and uh, I guess they had been, or he had been really kind of cultivating the land for, for deer. And they had one on, on the trail cam that he was anxious to, to get out and, and see during, you know, modern rifle season. And they split up. Um, she took a deer stand. He took a deer stand. And she's like really new to this. She hadn't hunted ever. I think she sat in a deer stand once with me years and years and years ago when she was little. You know, but the hunting thing is new to her since she got married. And he's an outdoorsman. You know, if, if it you know swims, flies, crawls, walks, he hunts it. And um, they were out opening morning, and that big buck walked out in front of her. You know, a couple I don't know hundred yards away, she dropped it one shot, and she said immediately her cell phone rang, and it was him saying which way did he run? And she's like, I I you know I'm I'm a little offended. I dropped him. All right, <laughs> he didn't run anywhere. I took care of business, and uh, so you know, good for her, but. Yeah, good size buck, bigger than anything mm-hmm. I'd shot in in the last few years that I hunted. So, yeah, pretty excited about it. Yeah, I mean, I got another week, so uh, hopefully I'm going to get out this weekend and and give them hell, but we shall see. Right? Have you ever tried crossbow hunting? Do you do you have a crossbow? No. I forget. No. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was one of those I think, things. I think New Hampshire. Maybe I'm mistaken. Um, I think you need to be handicapped or have some sort of disability to be able to hunt with a crossbow okay. in New Hampshire. Right. So another question I had. Any any like new things that you got into over the pandemic that you hadn't really been into previously? Um, I played a metric ass ton of Call of Duty Warzone. Did you really? <laughs> I played. Of course, I bought an amazing gaming PC, right. a fancy monitor with the high hertz, and like get my frame, you know, my frames per second, and. uh got a nice headset with a good mic right. and like I, I mean i got into it deep and it consumed me right during, through the pandemic through like the heat <laughs> of the pandemic i haven't played in like six six months right and uh and my gamer friends are like where the hell are you like what's going on she's like i don't know just like every once in a while things just turn off for me you know what i mean like sure, yeah. it just it was just enough and right you know it's a good and uh yeah, no, it, it, but it was fun while it lasted, man. Yeah. I, I actually had a really good time with it, and I was just like, I kind of joked around about gamers for a long time, but man, I got into it deep. And I was right. like a gross amount of time. Oh like, yeah, and it's not like usable time. It was like late night, everybody's sleeping time, and it's just like, whoop, it's getting daylight out. I better go to bed. Right? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> what the hell? Right. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is, like, a lot of buddies that weren't gamers were gamers during the pandemic. Oh, I bet. You know, yeah, oh, I heard a lot, a lot of that. Buddies yeah, kind of that. I heard a lot of that going on. Um, but man, oh man, have video games come a long way. Yeah. Whew. Right. Yeah. Right. But now that now that winter's here, um, my routine will be a lot more manageable because work travel is still not like what it was. It's still not like I'm not not traveling once a month. I'm not jumping on an airplane every few weeks. So gotcha. that's that that'll, that'll be good yeah um i've got like literally two trips i'll probably be going to louisiana in january february and then shot show january other than that that's it it's nice to see um, they're actually gonna do a shot show this year yeah i mean nice but not nice i mean it's a mask mandate 
yeah. throughout Vegas still. So mm -hmm. even casino floor, everything, unless you're smoking, drinking, or eating, you have to have a mask on. So like, I'm not looking forward to that part of it, but business must go on. You yep. know what I mean? I can't yep. just stop working. I can't stop shaking hands and meeting my people. You know, right. I gotta, I gotta do what I gotta do. So, well, you know, we normally send about 40 or 50 people. We have a sales staff of just under a hundred. Okay. Uh, we normally send 40 or 50 this year. We have 20 going. Oh, okay. Kind of a, so kind of a, a short dream team type of thing. And yeah, uh, yeah just definitely dialed it back. But, right. Uh, well, so. I mean, I think that's just, yeah, you see that in a lot of, in a lot of aspects of life, you know, things are kind of, they're slowly returning to normal cautiously, but still not quite open, you know, fully open for business like it used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Hmm. That's interesting. I've been sitting here like if you if you've heard like a clicking noise on the, on mm -hmm. the mic, I'm sitting here screwing around with it. One of the, the one of the unhealthy um, interests I acquired over the past year was was I kind of really got back into knives more. Mm. And this is this is a Hinderer XM18 uh, non flipper, mm -hmm. and I've just been sitting here. Yeah, it's a great great fidget toy if you want to lose a finger while you're not thinking. Mm -hmm. But it, it's fun. This this one's kind of neat one. But um, you know. <laughs> Those those kind of took the place of guns for a while, just because you know I started admiring the art of them and, and playing around with them. Of course, you get into them, and you realize, oh well, hey, there's subtle differences between these things. And the next thing you know, you got twenty of them, and, and you don't need <laughs> but one. So yeah, um, I don't know. Hobby wise, woodworking, I, I kind of yeah. did that. I, I, oh yeah, I yeah, saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah you I got turned, into that. Turned part of the the garage into a, into a really you know pretty nice um, you know place to go out there and just turn wood into sawdust. Bigger pieces of wood into smaller pieces of wood. No, I'm really no good at it, but it's just kind of the exact opposite of my day to day life. So that was fun. Um, and I then, feel like a big part of doing woodworking well is having the right equipment, though. I, I, like you know, if you yeah, have really good equipment set up the right way, I mean, it can make you. A it can lot make better. you look. It can make you look better at, at or, or at least make you know you, you go from being a really crappy woodworker to like you know, okay, these these joints don't look like a 12 year old did it with a hacksaw. Um, mm. you know, when you, when you're joining wood together, but yeah, I mean, it's fun. Yeah. I grew up in a, you know, with my grandfather had a really nice wood shop. And so a little bit of it was connecting back to my roots and, and recentering, getting some sanity back. And, and, you know, again, I'd walk out at, you know, so what's funny about the pandemic is when it started, I remember I'd literally returned to work after my daughter was born and I'd been there for a week and they all walked in on a Wednesday and we're all, you know, we're hearing all the stuff in the news about, you know, this, this virus that's kind of spreading around. And we, we literally had a team from a company in Israel here in Tennessee with us. And on that Wednesday, they were heading back. And so we were all kind of joking, like, man, I hope they let you back in the country. And they, they, they made it back, I think, within 12 hours of the country being closed down to, to, <laughs> to flights coming back in, which was really good for them. Um, and then you know, our bosses walked in and said, hey, um, grab your laptops, grab everything that you might need for a couple of weeks. You're going to go work from home until this, this virus thing, you know, blows over and everybody gets back to normal and that turned into a year and four months and i i didn't see the office again you know it was 100 percent work from home so it was kind of nice to be able to walk out in the garage and you know flip on a power saw and make big boards into small boards mm -hmm. and you know it's kind of just you know it's the complete opposite of sitting in front of a computer all day which was kind of nice the the really crappy thing about that was in um it was on Memorial Day weekend this year, 2021. I went to go get some some lumber. Uh, I was buying a couple of four by eight sheets of three quarter inch plywood, which is not really heavy, but they're bulky. Had my daughter with me, my oldest daughter, um, the, the eight year old with me, and um, well, seven year old. She'll be eight soon, but anyway, the, the, you know, had her with me, and uh, just us early morning Memorial Day went and picked up lumber and as I was hoisting it into the truck, I felt something weird happen in my, in my left arm. Like suddenly my left arm felt completely unusable. Felt like a, felt like an electric shock, like numb. I thought, well, this is weird. And like, I, you know, got the wood up into the, into the truck and, and, you know, was trying to move my arm and it would move a little bit, but it felt kind of janky. And I called my wife on the phone and said, something's wrong with my arm. I did something bad to it. Lifting wood. I don't understand what's going on. I'm coming home. May have to go to the hospital. Turned out it was a bicep tear. Bicep, yeah. Yep, just ripped that sucker. And, um, you know, that slowed me down a lot. But, yeah, that, that's been that's been my world. That and shooting occasionally. You go to the range and shoot two or three shots off with nine, and you think, okay, how many how many rounds of nine do I have left at home? 
okay, I'm done. I'm going back home now. So yeah. kind of kind of sad. Dry fire. I um, dry fire. I'll tell you one thing that I did really well on, and that is uh, selling my truck recently. Did you? Okay. So what? You you, you sold the F one fifty. Yeah, I had a uh, 2020 F-150 Lariat. Right. A uh, white one with a blackout package. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I lease vehicles because I just want a new one every three years, and I don't want to have to worry about being out of warranty or having negative equity or any of that BS. Right. I'll just always know I have a payment and never have to worry about anything else, right? Right, So. Right. And I worked in the car business for years, and like getting out of a lease early is like it's pretty tough stuff. Well, I drove this thing for 14 months and 17,200 miles and got $4,000 of positive equity. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. It's freaking bananas. That's really good. Yeah. The car business, the car money, the car market right now is freaking crazy. If you can find what you want new, which is the challenge now, it is like yeah. you are in good shape. If you've even thought about not liking your vehicle and wanting something else, check the values Plan ahead. because they are right. bananas right now. Right. So then if you can locate what you're looking for, man, oh man, you are in good shape because your trade is worth a ton. So what did you do? What did you get? What did you replace um, it with? I got an expedition. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What? So basically the same thing. Um, it's a 21 expedition. Um, I they don't have a lariat, so I got the limited. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, I love it. I mean, what, for what little I really in? needed the bed of the truck for the expedition does it well. Yeah. So what 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 engine are they putting in the expedition now? The exact that... same as on my truck. I had the five point three liter twin okay. turbo EcoTech. Right. Yeah. No, that's great. That's right, definitely... EcoBoost. Sorry, EcoBoost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I put a the K and N fuel injection performance kit on it, which is cold air intake and some some other sensor and stuff like that and yeah get a little bit sounds a little nicer and gets a little bit better gas mileage and has a little bit more power and um i think i'm probably gonna put like a two inch lift in it and some 33s uh apparently with it uh, you do a two rear three front you can fit 35s but i don't want to stuff it or lose any steering radius so i'm right. gonna do like 33 33 11 50s or 33 12 50s probably and Andy, uh, when you guys go up to the cabin for sure but holy crap, are tires expensive right now? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and hard to find. Like, yeah, like thirty three twelve fifties, right? Are like four hundred and thirty dollars a piece. Oh, I, I know. I'm like, yeah. holy shit! I remember buying it for my Jeep, and they were like a buck and a quarter. It's right. like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I so, yes. and I bought a I bought a Ram Power Wagon. Yeah. So, but then of course that was like, hey, I need tires because the tires that come on are small and wimpy looking. And then I bought thirty five twelve fifties and. Oh my God! I, I could have bought several guns for what I paid for the tires. Yep, it's just stupid. So, um, man, I'm, I got to tell you though, I this the EcoBoost motor, the 3.5 liter twin turbo, it's like 400 horsepower, it's a just beast. 400 foot pounds of torque. Yeah. But like, if I'm on the highway and I'm not driving like a complete asshole, yeah, and I put it in eco mode, getting like 24 miles per gallon. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that's impressive that. out of a 400 horsepower. <laughs> right, I mean. it is. I mean, you're 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 putting down as much torque and horsepower as is the the 6.4 in that that power wagon puts out, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm getting half your economy. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I oh well, I I like the truck. You know. I've, so I've, a buddy just got that new six cylinder Chevy diesel. It, is that the? Hmm, I'm trying to think which one that is. I think it's like a 3.6 liter diesel. Okay. Yeah. He's getting like 38 miles per gallon. Yeah. 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 That, that engine's great. The, the, the small displacement, high output. A three liter Duramax. Right. Yeah. 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 Man. Come on to Shooter's Nation. You have no idea what we're going to be talking about. Knives. Yeah. Sorry guys. Guns, trucks, hunting. Nah. Hey, you know, it's, it's catching up on on what's going on. So, um, yeah, I think that really though, that, (laughs) yeah, we, we talked about this the other day, like if we're going to do this again, and, and start recording podcasts. We want it to be enjoyable. We want it to be fun stuff. And yeah, it was a chore sitting around talking about nothing but guns and the gun industry and, and, you know, self-defense and, and preparedness and all that stuff. It's, it's all really good, but it, it's, it it's not that it was the chore to talk about it. It was the chore to come up with the topics. I think it was a the new bigger angle. Every right? It's like, right. okay, so yeah. what are we going to fill this two hours? With? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yep. who are we going to have for a guest and right. what are our talking points? And, and like, and it's just like, when you do it, 
52 times a year right like you just start like becoming a little bit challenging there's only so many new things you can talk about and you start repeating like lining up the guests right and, yeah yeah i mean and and you know there are there are some you know uh, there are definitely bigger shows longer running shows that that are doing that and and i don't know how they do it other than the fact that they have a panel of people that are coming on all the time i think about you know the primary and secondary modcast i i those are always interesting to to listen to um, I don't, I, I, I'll be very honest. I haven't listened to a single one of them probably all the way through because yeah, my interest kind of wanes as I get further into it. But, you know, depending on who the, who the guest speakers are, it can be interesting, you know, cause they're, they're, they're approaching every issue from their own perspectives and their own experiences mm-hmm. and things. But I think that that's kind of the secret sauce is that if, if you don't have just a ton of variety in perspectives, then there's only so much you can do with the same material over and over and over. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, that becomes fatiguing, you know? Um, and the fact that you and I are both kind of wired the same way that the fact that we don't want to produce a crap product. So, yeah. um, you know, for what you're paying for it out there, mm-hmm. we, you know, we, we still don't want to give you a crap product. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. It, it's going to be, I think, so we, we've talked about this and, and maybe I, I'm looking at the clock and, and it, it's funny. I mean, it's already an hour, 20 minutes into this. So I, Yes, that's about normal for us. Yeah, you know, it's fun to catch mm-hmm. up. But you know, I, I thinking about you know, kind of like wrapping this one up and not not talking about everything this episode. And we'll come back and talk about more because we want to you know do this again. But um, I think it's it's safe to say that we've missed catching up with each other and yeah. everyone else and talking about the the fun stuff. Right the the fun stuff was was always what made doing the the show and what makes doing the show right now fun. It, it's mm-hmm. the fun stuff makes it fun. That's logical. Um, I, you know, we, we want to release more episodes and, and keep mm-hmm. it going as long as we can. But honestly, uh, you said it a moment ago, it, I, it can't become a chore, right? Like if, if this becomes a second job or a third job or whatever, you know, I, I just don't see the enjoyment in that. And I, I don't think that I honest, I personally cannot push as hard as we used to, to release 52 episodes a year. And I know you can't either. Right. Cause mm-hmm. that sucks the enjoyment out of it. So I just spoiler alert. Yeah. You know, we're going to do this periodically. I, I can't tell you what the release cadence is going to be. Cause I have no freaking mm-hmm. clue. It's going to just be whatever, you know, whatever. So, yeah. um, I, you know, I don't know. I, I guess the, the right thing to tell people is that if, if you're glad to hear us back and, you know, you want us to, to use your time wisely and, and, and therefore our own time wisely, First of all, subscribe on iTunes or whatever so you know that when a, when an episode comes out because you can't count on it being every other week or every week or whatever else. Just subscribe, and when a new new episode lands, you'll you'll receive it. And hooray. Pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly, yeah. pleasantly surprised, right? But beyond that, I think the most important thing that I would want people to do that are listening right now is tell us what they want us to talk about, like what's important to you guys. And um, I'll, I'll set anything – political even to a political off in a little area called no man's land I'm, i don't even want to go there right mm-hmm. um <laughs> just don't even want to go there uh but anything else i think is probably fair game and if it has nothing to do with guns and, and like hey we talked about something else you know this 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 comeback episode that it interests you like hey yeah talk more about that then mm-hmm. let us know what that is um you know if you want to listen to me flick open a, a knife you know nonstop for 30 minutes i'll <laughs> I, I will not do that, but <laughs> not intentionally. I might still do it accidentally, but um, yeah, I mean, just let us know what you want to hear about, and that way we can use time wisely. Um, I don't know. What else? It'd be kind of fun maybe to catch up with Jason Demo once he gets over to, you know, at Cloud Defensive and talk to the Cloud Defensive mm-hmm. guys and, yeah. and chat with them. And, you know, maybe even I think I'd pitch the idea to them or any other guest is like, hey, you know, what are you, what are you known for? OK, well, with them, as an example, they're known for kick ass lighting. But what would they like to talk about? You know, maybe yep. they don't want to talk a, you know, for an hour about kick ass lighting. So yep. what, what do they want to talk about? You know, that, that'd be kind of a fun spin on things. But I don't know. Yeah. What are your thoughts? What, what, what do you think as far as looking forward? What what? No, I think that's great. I mean, it's just it, it's the it I, like you said I it just it becoming a chore right yeah, yeah. and I don't want it to be that because I want it to be fun I want it to be if it's fun for me it'll be more fun for the listener I feel like and uh, as long as it doesn't become a chore and there's just a little bit more flexibility and that I don't feel because not only is it is it 
like, oh, I have to do it. No, I don't. I never had to do it. Right. But at the same time, I didn't like letting people down. Like they expected their episode. Sure. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. you yeah, don't want right. to let people down. So that was that was the big part. You know, any time I could have been like, David, I can't do it this week. Period. Right. And you'd have been like, oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. then but inside, it's just like I know people were looking forward to that episode. And I just <laughs> oh, I don't like I being know. that guy. I mean, and, and, you know, we used to even game plan. How can we record a few episodes in advance and have some in the bank so that if we have to skip a week, then we can still release one and whatever else. And that was that was an admirable pursuit i guess but that was still it still became a chore because you know it's almost you're like watching the gas gauge oh well, if we start dipping down to the point where we have no episodes we gotta hurry up and record something else and, and then mm-hmm. oh my we need to we need to replenish that bank so let's record a couple more and and you know it's eh, whatever screw that i don't want to do that again so um we'll see i mean there, there's there's some neat stuff the past the past two years i've I've done things and I've gotten involved in things and, and, you know, even firearms related things that, that I, I hadn't even thought about talking about on this, this episode today. So, um, you know, that stuff will come out and, and I've run into some folks that are interesting, you know, characters here locally. It's, it's funny that like middle Tennessee has become this weird, I don't know, like a, a retirement home for scary special forces guys. <laughs> and, and, you know, they're all around. And I've gotten to I've gotten to you know, shoot with a few of them. I'm I'm kicking myself so bad. I almost got to take a a knife fighting class with Kyle Lamb from Viking Tactics and um, Alan Alishawitz, uh, you know, uh, Alishawitz knives. And it was local. It was it was going to be awesome. I've talked to guys that went, and I hate them. They got to go, and I didn't because that is that that happened right after I tore my or right yeah right after I tore my bicep, and I was out, 100 percent out. And they're like, oh well, mm-hmm. you know, just don't even show up if you're injured. And so, I'm done. I can't do this. And, you know, so anyway, I mean, but the, the, the interesting thing is that kind of stuff's happening around me a lot lately. And I think it gives some, some opportunities to bring some, you know, fun, interesting people on to talk about crazy stuff. So, uh, we'll try to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, any, any parting thoughts, any famous last words for, for the, for the listeners? No, I mean I'm 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 looking forward to it, and uh, yep. should be a, a good winner's worth of worth of content that we should be able to put out there. And, right, and uh, I'll start making some notes as to some talking points, and because we just kind of tossed this together recently, so oh, yeah, yeah. Um, There's like no planning in this one, so yeah, yep. it'll get so, better. Uh, yeah, very cool. And if you guys have ideas, don't forget now that, that we have unarchived the Shooters Nation Facebook group. Yeah, yeah, it's what's the, it called? Shooters the community. The community. The, the Shooters yeah, Nation community. community. Right. Um, yeah. So go join there and put your comments and concerns and stuff there. Right. Yeah. So you'll, you'll find that facebook.com slash shooters nation, all one word that takes you to the page. And then from the page, you'll be able to find the group that's, that's linked off of it. Um, We've still got the email addresses, I believe. David at ShootersNation.com, Mark at ShootersNation.com. ShootersNation.com is still a thing. Um, it's going to it's gonna be funny to see how that thing reacts when I upload new content. To it. It's going to be like, what the hell is this? But, um, you know, and, and then um, <laughs> we're, we're bearing down on the holidays, so I don't know. Maybe we'll try to get another episode in before you know, the Christmas holidays. You know, but I would, I would also guarantee you that we won't release anything between Christmas and new years and stuff like that. Cause you know, that's, that's family time and that is super important. But, um, and, and I guess, you know, the other thing is the audio tonight probably wasn't the best. I'll, I'll, I'll mess around with that some more, try to figure out what was going on, try to make it sound better again. Um, and missed you guys, Mark, I missed you, but I missed, I missed the audience, you know? And so, yeah. um, it, it just feels like it's right to come back now and and do it at, you know maybe a different way than a more relaxed pace but it's just good to be back so uh get used to it you'll you'll hear us yeah. more often definitely more often either for the past two years <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> yeah all right well uh mark have a good night and yeah. listeners we will talk to you again soon
preceding segment was a production of the Shooters Nation podcast. Visit us online at ShootersNation.com.